Uh, here are uh, Stephen Sarnison and Kent Redford of WCS, Wildlife Conservation Society, uh, po pointing a finger at the poverty alleviation movement and saying, in its new incarnation, it's largely subsumed or supplanted conservation. The trend has gone unnoticed, but it poses a significant threat to conservation objectives. And what they're basically saying is, if you're interested in protecting the biosphere, you ought to get on with that job. You shouldn't be distracted by the equally significant but different agendas uh, of, of reducing poverty. At the same time, you've got two, uh, two British social scientists here. Uh, Dillis Rowe works for the International Institute for Environment and Development in London, and Joe Elliott actually works for, wildlife, works for um, African Wildlife Foundation uh, nowadays. But she's saying here, poor people should not pay the price for biodiversity protection. So you can see the, sort of the nature of the debate. Uh, what, is the, what is the impact that they're all talking about? Well, it's about whether you can achieve uh, a win-win solution, whether you can achieve economic growth, which brings wealth, uh, in order to cut uh, poverty uh, without damaging biodiversity. And the argument is uh, that you, if you want to protect biodiversity, you have to focus on that as a goal. Uh, but if you do that, you, have, you run the risk of hurting the poor, and you also run the risk of uh, inconveniencing or reducing economic growth. And we're used in developed, developed countries, industrialized countries, to seeing this argument, this axis argued about, with, let us say, a government wishing to start drilling for oil in place X, which is full of wildlife, uh, and the Wildlife Conservation Society is urging them not to on the grounds that it's a, a wilderness refuge. We're used to that debate. What I'm saying is that in the developing world, there's a third axis, and it's quite a complex one. Mm -hmm.